Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. I want to do a follow-up on this guy. Stick around until the end and find out how this happens. So the last uh, water test I did, you guys saw, uh, this did not have the fins. And the fins have really made a pretty big difference in how it performs. Uh, what I found is that it actually glides a little more than before. Before it was a little twitchier. I think it's that little fin right there. It's giving the head a little more direction, so I get a little bit of more a glide to it. Now I'm trying to stay in the side of the lake here where there's very little wind, and hopefully the sun will be in the right spot, and I'll be able to get some shots that you can actually see on film. All right, first of all, let me answer a couple of questions that a few people have been asking. One is whether the uh, ribbon or the strap in the middle got messed up with the clear coat and the paint. And they were worried that it was stiff, and it's not. You can see it clearly it's nice and limber. The other, I think, misconception people had is that when I reeled it in at a steady pace, you could see that it, it tracked straight. Well, that was part of my initial design. I really wanted it to be that sort of um, uh, directionally stable, I guess. And I wanted it to glide more than to twitch. It ended up being more twitchy than I really wanted it. Uh, but now with this, uh, it actually glides better than it had. Let me give you um, a quick demonstration. You can see it glides. And it'll glide to both sides now. A little twitchier than I really wanted it, but I think it's still a, a really good lure. I think it's going to catch fish. Now let me show you what I was talking about on the straight-in reel here. So when I retrieve it on a straight retrieve, you can see it stays pretty straight. And if I get it going with a pretty good clip, you can see how it swims. And notice that it's swimming as if it were a full uh, one-piece lure that that tail isn't really doing anything other than following behind the main head so pretty much it's doing what I expected it to the only uh, sort of change that I would want is that it would glide a little longer before it actually turns so hard and I think that's just a function of how flat these sides are. I think if I had built the lure a little more rounded, a little thicker, with a little more girth on it, I would have had a, a little longer glide uh, and a little less turbulence. So the other nice thing that comes of it being a little twitchy is that you can walk the dog just under the surface. And it takes almost no effort to do it. It actually really wants to walk the dog easily. So, I guess in conclusion, it's a viable lure. It swims really well. It's not exactly how I designed it, so I'm a little peeved at that, but uh, you can't complain about, I think, the aesthetic and the actual action. So, thank you guys for watching the series, and I hope you learned a little something and if you've got questions or suggestions certainly offer them up i'm going fishing with this guy oh, oh man that ended pretty abruptly so <laughs> if you were wondering what would it take to break that lure i just found out I caught a little tiny pickerel and I was bringing it to the boat and I was just playing with it. I didn't even want to turn on the camera because who cares? And it hooked up on the bow line that was in the water. That bow line right there. It was hung up on the bow line and I'm like, oh crap, now how am I going to get that off? And out of nowhere, a six foot alligator comes along, grabs the pickerel and hauls ass with the pickerel and half my lure. Son of a... So 
So that means I've got to reboot this design. I'm going to make another one with a different hinge. And we're coming back out here. Revenge of the Thread Fin. Catch you on the next video.